Well, 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 hello everybody, and welcome back to the latest Halo Infinite update. The studio has revealed what to expect when the newest update drops with the game. So today, we're going to go through everything, and then I'll give my thoughts on it at the end. The good news? We actually have playable content being added, sandbox changes, including some things I've personally wanted for a while, some new cosmetics, obviously, but more on them later, as well as the return of some fan favorite Halo Reach armor that I am praying 343 puts in the exchange instead of the shop. It definitely seems like 343 is going back to fix a lot of things with the end of life Halo Infinite support. With that said, we've got a lot to cover, let's get into it. First up today, and it's what most people, myself included, care about, playable content. And the question is, what can we expect when the update drops July 30th? Well, it might have taken 25, 52 years, but VIP is finally launching on the game with multiple different variants. Halo Reach's Headhunter, just like Juggernaut made in Forge, will be launching two weeks later. This staggered release is probably to keep up consistent updates throughout the month as opposed to releasing it altogether. You can actually load up Headhunter right now on Halo Infinite and try it for yourself. I'll put it in the description for you to try out and the game mode is fairly straightforward if you've played Halo Reach. You kill the enemy, you take their skull and you score it in the goal. As I said before, not super excited for VIP, I am for Headhunter, and I'm going to maintain judgement on both modes until I actually get to play them against real people. Moving on to cosmetics, and it wouldn't be a CU update without cosmetics, 343 is releasing the final Halo Reach armor people have been waiting on. Maybe there'll be more after this? We don't know. In any case, two fan favourite armor sets are returning. On screen is the new armor, and I've personally been waiting for the military police helmet, so I'm happy about that. As with all Halo Infinite updates, only one set of armor is going to be in the back battle pass, and as always, one of these is going to be in the shop. Damn you free to play Halo. When people were looking at the update 343 shared, they actually spotted the Haunted Helmet in the trailer itself. If you're unaware, the Haunted Helmet was the reward Bungie gave players for hitting Inheritor in Halo Reach, the max rank. It is my hope that now that the exchange is in the game, 343 has the forethought to make it a free to earn helmet but it costs a lot of Spartan points. Make people invest a lot of time into the game to work for it. Sure, 95% of people think they're going to throw it in the shop, myself included, but 343 have the opportunity to do something smart here. Short-term profits don't outweigh long-term gain, and Halo Infinite is in serious lack of rewards that incentivize higher playtime on the game. I would love the Haunted Helmet to be earnable by all players, they just have to spend time on the game. As a quick side note, now that 343 is going back and fixing things, I do wish 343 would fix players not being able to find matches. What do I do to get games? Well, thanks to today's video sponsor, NordVPN, it allows me to find games no matter what time of day on Halo Infinite. Can you not find games due to where you live? Would you like to watch shows on Netflix from other regions? Then NordVPN has you covered. I legitimately cannot find games on Halo Infinite without NordVPN, as I need to connect to US West to even play the game. Nord also offers extra layers of security, threat protection, and a 30-day money-back guarantee if you aren't satisfied with the service. The newest NordVPN feature scans all downloaded files for malware, protecting your PC, as well as monitoring the dark web for traces of your online profile. Yes, Nord gives you the ability to connect to unique locations around the world, but it can also be used to play your favorite games online. By using my code nordvpn.com forward slash mint, you can get four months extra. Big thank you to Nord for sponsoring today's video. Now moving on to Forge, and I've got to say, the Forge team over at 343 Industries are phenomenal. Consistently, throughout the entire life cycle of the game, and by the way, they are one of the last teams working on the game, they've put out banger after banger after banger updates. They work on more than just Forge now, by the way, and today's update is no exception. So what's new with Forge this time? The team has added Jeff Steitzer and the campaign music into Forge. Kilimanjaro Prop Hunt Crispy Extra Crispy Over 1,000 Jeff starts and lines, including Battle Royale, are now able to be scripted and all campaign music is now available to add to your campaign missions. Players are now one step closer to creating their own campaign levels. I still have my reservations about the community creating all of the content, and I don't think that will ever change, but for any Forgers out there, this update is a massive win for you guys. Of course, there's other Forge items that most players will never notice, but one thing you'll definitely notice, 313 finally added a toggle so you 
you can add or remove the infection overlay, this will also work for VIP. Should be helpful for custom games going forward. With that said, and moving on to the meaty part of the update, we have the sandbox. How the game is actually going to feel and how it's going to play. 343 has made some massive changes here, and I don't say that lightly. Campaign weapons, regular weapons, vehicles, you name it, have all seen changes. Across the board, it's one of the biggest meta changes in the entire game's life cycle, and here is what you need to know. First up, we have regular weapons, and I'll start with the starting weapons, the bandit, and the assault rifle. The assault rifle has actually seen a buff, Hard to believe, as I thought it was super effective already, but 343 has lowered the final amount of bloom of the weapon. So if you hold down the trigger and you spray, the reticule would become very wide and very inaccurate. This update is aimed to help new players, as anyone who's played any amount of Halo Infinite burst fires their assault rifle and won't run into this issue. 343 said, and I quote, we wanted to help improve the reliability and the feel of the assault rifle. Basically, this means less bloom overall if you hold down the trigger. Let's move on to the bandit. Now, the band on the other hand has seen a nerf. What did 343 change, you might ask? Well, they slowed down the pace of the weapon, mainly the time to kill. And it was very quick before. So fast, in fact, it almost felt like a Call of Duty weapon with how fast it was. After July 30th, the bandit will fire slower overall, but the red reticle accuracy will be increased to help deal that final shot. I don't mind this change overall, as the bandit was really, really quick to kill. Moving on to the disruptor, and 343 actually listened to my feedback, so thank you for that. With the change of the new networking model, the disruptor now lands damage consistently, something it didn't do before. So 343 has re-added the damage over time feature. Halo weapons having a unique feel is important, and this makes the disruptor stand out from other weapons. I still feel like the EMP is unnecessary, but this is a great step in the right direction. It's important to note, damage over time, the electrical damage, won't de-scope an enemy if they are zoomed in. Now in terms of more significant changes, we have the Sentinel Beam. Currently, it's an up-close quarters weapon that has quite a large damage drop-off the further you are away from an enemy. This is completely being removed. If you hit someone with a Sentinel Beam, it'll do the exact same amount of damage if you're far away or if you're up close. Be warned, this is going to make the gun extremely powerful. However, they did remove the extra damage that would be dealt if you shot the enemy in the head. Next up is the Ravager, and 343 slightly buffed the regular Ravager. What this basically means is each Ravager shot fires three individual pellets. It was six pellets to get a kill, two burst total, it now only needs five out of six pellets to kill. So it's a slight damage increase. What 343 really changed here, and oh boy did it need it, was the Rebound Ravager. The campaign variant has had a huge buff. I'm saying 343 buffed the hell out of it. Now the overcharge will instantly one hit kill an enemy. It will do a significant amount of AOE damage. And instead of bouncing, if it hits a target directly, it'll instantly explode, dealing massive damage. The bouncing shot is almost like a brute shot now. This is one of the biggest weapon changes, and it's turned the gun from being one of the worst into one of the best. I'm very excited to try this one out July 30th. Some other weapons that saw minor changes were the Bulldog, the Rocket Launcher, and the Sniper. They all saw an increase in their ammo reserves, meaning you can hold more ammo overall. So an infection, you'll hold more ammo for the shotgun. The rocket launcher can hold two extra bullets. And the sniper, at max capacity was 20 rounds, it now is 24. In terms of weapon-specific changes, 343 finally fixed the inconsistent rocket launcher. Now if you land a shot very close to the enemy, it will consistently kill them. This has been feedback for over two years, so I hope this is finally fixed. The last of the ordinary weapons is the skewer, and all it's had is a reload speed buff, so it reloads faster. Now as I mentioned before with the Ravager, 343 updated the legendary campaign version. They've also done that for every other campaign variant. Each gun is now more consistent. The Impact Commando, which was notoriously bad at range, has seen an improvement. The Special Mangler now feels way less sluggish, and the Special Unbound Plasma Pistol is actually a viable weapon for all. All of these weapons really struggled before, and 343 is confident these changes will make it more consistent. After reading these changes, a weapon I'm really excited to use now is the upgraded Stalker Rifle. The white Stalker Rifle Ultra is now a three-shot kill. I'm wondering if this is going to make it like a Magnum Pistol from Halo Combat Evolved, the three-shot kill. 343 also said they fixed the weapon jamming on it, so it's going to be very interesting to use. Finally, the last weapon they touched on was the Volatile Skewer, and what 343 did was increase the projectile speed to match the the regular skewer. Finally, an upgraded version of that weapon. Now with all of that out of the way, we've got some large vehicle and gameplay changes that you guys need to see. And honestly, I'm so happy 343 changed this. First of all, the Banshee, my beloved. And after three years, it's actually going to be good again. No longer will slightly touching walls 
wheels explode the entire vehicle. It only took a few years, but yes, 343 have fixed it. They also buffed the plasma cannons, and the Banshee bomb will now fire faster. I'm going to try this with keyboard and mouse when the update drops. I have a feeling this vehicle is about to become a monster. The Ghost, on the other hand, has seen some much needed nerfs. Driving it backwards and sideways won't splatter enemies anywhere near as consistently now. In the past, I would just reverse straight into enemies and it would splatter them. Funny when I do it to people, but I didn't enjoy when it happened to me. And 343 actually reduced the health of both sides of the ghost slightly. So we'll see when the update lands what sort of effect this has. Finally today, and it's one of the most significant changes, and it's grenade jumping has returned to Halo. What I'll say about it is this. I am very happy that grenade jumping is back, but people had to beg for this for three years. Across the board, we're seeing a return to Halo staples. The plasma pistol EMP feature is a perfect example of this. Going forward, please don't change things for the sake of change, especially if they get reverted three years later. But yes, super happy to see grenade jumping back. First thing I'm going to do when the update drops is put a frag grenade on the ground, climb it with a repulsor, and see how far I go. And that's it, a very large update coming to Halo Infinite July 30th, and as always, once it's live, I'll go through it and see how it is. Pretty happy with the majority of the changes, playable content is good, and the Forge additions are nice. New weapons and vehicles are really the only thing I could ask for beyond this, so hopefully it's something 343 considers. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.